Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now answering question number three from the October 2021 Pure Mathematics P1 International A Level exam. And this question here is all about inequalities. So, question three, part one is telling us to solve this inequality 3 over x is greater than 4. And this is a type of inequality that we must be very careful about. Um, if this was just an equation, if it was not an inequality, then we would have to basically get rid of the fraction by multiplying both sides of the equation by the LCM of the denominator, which is x. So we multiply by x, and this side will be multiplied by x, and that side will be multiplied by x, and we're left with 3 equals 4x, and then we divide both sides by 4 to end up with 3 quarters. So we'd end up with x equals 3 over 4. Now... That is fine with an equation, and that's actually what's happening when you're solving such a thing. There's no such, the, you know, there's a lot of students see this, they say, okay, basically the, the 4 flies over there and becomes 3 equals 4x. Well, that's what it looks like, but it's not flying, it doesn't sprout wings. You're multiplying both sides by the same thing, which is x, in order to eliminate this x, which is dividing this side. You're multiplying it, it cancels it out, therefore you multiply the other side by x. That's what's happening mathematically. Okay, now, the problem is, in an inequality, if you multiply both sides of the inequality by a negative number, or even if you divide it by a negative number, then what happens is the inequality sign must switch direction. So it must go from greater than to less than, if that's the case. And as x is unknown, and we don't know whether it's positive or negative, then we cannot multiply by x, because the inequality sign is there. Because if you multiply by x and it's negative, you'll have to change the sign direction. So to get around that, because we cannot multiply by x because it could possibly be negative, to get around that issue, what we can do is we can multiply by a number that will get rid of the x as the denominator, and at the same time, that number is going to be a positive number for sure. And you know, if you think about it a little bit, of course, that's going to be x squared. If I multiply this side by x squared, okay, the x and the x squared will cancel out, leaving you with x times 3, 3, which is 3x. And I have to multiply this side by x squared as well. i end up with 3x is greater than 4x squared. Now, x squared is definitely positive. No matter what value x you use, this is going to be a positive value. All right? It's going to be a positive value. Okay, so... That's one thing that we, we, we should realize. Now, if we're going to now solve this inequality, we have what's called a quadratic inequality now. You've got an x squared term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it um, 3x minus 4x squared is greater than 0. And I'm going to solve this quadratic inequality. Now, to solve this quadratic inequality, first I'm going to find what's called the critical values. The critical values are where the inequality is equal to 0. I want to find where the range of value of, of x when this inequality is greater than 0. So we find first the critical values where it's equal to 0. So I'm going to first equate this to 0 now. So 3x minus 4x squared is equal to 0. Um, I can factorize this. x is common. And I have 3 minus 4x inside the bracket equals 0. So either x equals 0 or 3 minus 4x equals 0, in which case you'll end up with um, 3 equals 4x, so x equals 3 quarters. So x equals 3 quarters. So those are called the critical values. So now I'm going to try and figure out what the um, inequality is that solves our situation here. So I'm going to draw a pair of axes. Okay, you, don't, you can just do this as a sketch. So I know that when x equals 0, and when x equals 3 quarters, this curve is going to equal 0. And I know also that this curve is the type of curve that opens downwards. It goes like this. So it's, going to, it's going to have this type of shape. You don't have to draw it accurately here. It's just a, it's a sketch just to help you understand how to deal with this situation. Now we can see that for values of x which are less than 0, this curve is going to give you negative values of y. 
Okay? We want to know when it's going to give you positive values of y, when it's going to be greater than 0. Any value of x which is greater than 3 quarters, again, is going to give you negative values of y. Where does it start becoming greater than 0? When it passes through the x-axis and it goes above it. All these values of x will lead to positive values of y. So the range of values of x from, from this point, that part of the graph here, which is going to be representing this area over here, Okay, this part over here, between those, those two x values, is going to be above 0. So when x is between um, 0 and 3 quarters, which is how, how we're going to write it like this, these are the range of values of x for which they are, uh, you know, you're going to have a positive value for this inequality. Okay, so that's the answer to this question, question number 3, part 1. Okay, so um, I hope that was clear. Very important you can't just multiply by x because you will you basically lose some solutions and it's not possible to multiply by x because it's inequality and you don't know what x is. If we knew x was positive, then we could. If, for example, the question told us x is a positive number or it's in the context of something where it can't be negative, then no problem. But because x is possibly negative, then, you know, you could, you, you know, you, sh you have to basically... Um, you have to basically multiply by x squared. Now, there's an alternative method of solving this problem as well by thinking about the graph of this function. So 3x is greater than, and 3 over x squared is greater than 4. Now, we could think about this in terms of sketching the graph of these two functions on the same axis and seeing where they intersect and seeing where one of them is greater than the other. That's an alternative method. So if we draw the graph of 3 over x, we know it's like 1 over x, but just stretched out. So it's going to have this same shape where you have this asymptote. At x equals 0 and y equals 0. It goes like this on this side as well. So that's y equals 3 over x. And the line y equals 4 is a line that goes like this. Okay, this is line y equals 4. Now they intersect at this point. So they intersect when 3 over x is equal to 4. So when 3 is equal to 4x, so x equals 3 quarters. So they intersect when x equals 3 quarters. Okay, so we want to know the range of values of x for which the graph y equals 3 over x is greater than 4. Okay, so we can see that it's greater than 4. This Basically, when is this curve above this line? And we can see that it's above this line Okay, from the point... We're up to the point where they intersect and, you know, from the re region when x is greater than 0. When x is greater than 0, see, this, this line is going to continue getting closer and closer to the y-axis, closer and closer to uh, the y-axis. As x reaches 0, it's going to be, you know, really close to the, uh, the, the y-axis. When x equals 0, then it's going to be undefined. Okay, so from values just, just after x, just for after x equals 0, until three quarters or just before three quarters because that three quarters is going to be equal they're going to equal each other so just before three quarters those are the range of values of x for which um, this line is a, a, a greater than four so we can say between zero and three quarters so that's an alternative method of solving this inequality graphically okay and you get of course the same answer all right so that's question part one now we're going to go to part two now, part two tells us that there's a sketch here of a curve C and a straight line L. The infinite region R, shown shaded in figure one, lies in quadrants two and three and is bounded by C and L only. Okay, so here you have a region R, which is shaded, and it lies in quadrants two and three. This is quadrant one, two, three, four. And it is only bounded by the curve C and the line L, nothing else. Those two are the only two things which bound it. And we can see this region is above the line and below the curve. Okay, so we can figure out the inequalities that reach that, that lead to this <coughs> quite easily if we know the equation of the curve and the line. It says the line has a gradient of 3. So the gradient of this line is equal to 3. 
C has the equation 2x squared, y equals 2x squared minus 50. So C has the equation y equals 2x squared minus 50. So we have the equation of the curve, which is quadratic. And C and L intersect on the negative x-axis. So they intersect, one of the places where they intersect is here, on the x-axis, when y equals 0. On the x-axis, y equals 0. So use inequalities to define the region R. Okay, first of all, what we can say is they intersect, okay, on the x-axis. So we can find the coordinates of the points where they intersect because this line passes through the x, this curve passes through the x-axis when y equals 0. So we can say that when y equals 0, when y equals 0, we can say that 2x squared minus 50 equals 0. So 2x squared equals 50. So x squared equals 25. So x equals plus or minus 5. Okay, so that's where this curve co crosses the x-axis at these two points here. But of course, the point we want is where x is negative 5. Okay, so I can see that, you know, at the point, you can say they, they intersect. They intersect when x equals negative 5. So that means at the point minus 5, 0, because it's on the y-axis. So I know that line L, for line L, I know that its gradient is equal to 3. And I know a point on the line minus 5, 0. So I can use that to find the equation of the line. Because in order to use inequalities to define the region R, I need the equation of both the line and the curve. The, the curve I have, the line, that's what I'm doing now, finding the equation of the line using the gradient and a point on the line, which is the point minus 5, 0. How do I know that's a point on the line? They told us the line and the curve intersect on the x-axis. And this curve passes through the x-axis at minus 5. Okay, so we can say that y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So y minus minus 5, which is y plus 5. Sorry, what am I doing? y minus 0, y minus 0 equals m, which is 3, times x minus minus 5, which is x plus 5. So y equals 3x plus 15. That's the equation of the line. Now we can deal with the inequalities. I can see that the region is above the line. So if I draw, if I put y and I put um, 3x plus 15, and I put y equals, whoops, not y, and I'll, if I won't put the equal sign, I'll just put on this side 2x squared minus 50, I can see that the line, the region is above the line. So I know that y is greater than 3x plus 15, and I know it's below the, the curve, so y is less than 2x squared minus 50. Okay, however, if I leave it like this, there's another region that's not shaded, which will also be included. Because this region here was also where the, it's above the line and below the curve. So if this was the inequality that we've written down, then this would also be shaded as well. Okay, however, it's not shaded. The only part that's shaded is this. So we, we, should, re we should mention that it's also where x is less than, for example, we could put minus 5. Okay, because that's the third inequality that defines a region because we're only interested in the part which is in this quadrant here. So we could put x is less than 0, x is less than minus 5. We could put, as long as this uh, x is less than these two, these two values here. If x is, um, if you choose a value that's on this side of this point where they intersect, then that part would have to be shaded. So as long as, if you say x is less than any value between here and here, that would mean we only shade this region R. Okay, so even if we looked at, even if we say x is less than this value, and we can find out what this value is if you wanted to, 2x squared minus 50 is equal to 3x plus 15. So we could find out what that is, 2x squared minus 3x minus 65 is equal to zero. So you could work out what that, that actually is. Okay, um, hold on, 2x squared minus 50 equals 3x plus 15. 2x squared minus 3x minus 65 equals 0. If you calculate, if you solve that equation, um, you're going to have two numbers that multiply. Well, one of them should be x equals 0, x equals minus 5. Well, we know one of them is x equals minus 5, so x plus 5. 
and this is going to be 2x minus 13. Yeah, 2x squared minus 13x plus 10x minus 65. That's right. I know one of the factors is x, x equals minus 5. All right, so that's x plus 5 is going to be a factor, sorry. And 2x minus 13 has to be the other one. So this value will be x equals 13 over 2, which is 6.5. So this is when x equals 6.5. So as long as you have x is less than 6.5, from all the way to x is less than 5, anywhere between those values, you can have, um, you can make a statement like this, x is less than, if it's from 6.5 to, to minus 5, any, any, the number here has to be between those values, then it would be correct. Because, you know, if you put, for, num for example, x is less than, seven or a number greater than that, then that, that area would also have to be shaded between that number and this intersection. So it's from this intersec in intersection to this, this intersection here that you have to say x is less than. The easiest thing to say is x is less than minus five. Okay, now, the other thing is, I mean, the way I teach my students, if it's a solid line, I'll put the equal sign. Okay, um, in the math scheme, in the main math scheme, they only put the less than and greater than signs without the equal part. Okay, now I've taught my students that when you have a, a dotted line, dotted lines, that's when you use the less than without the equal sign. And that's perfectly, that's actually correct. So both of these are actually acceptable in the mark scheme. If you look later on in the mark scheme, they mention that, um, you know, as long as you're consistent, both of those are acceptable. So for example, you can't put one of them as greater than or equal to, and the other one as less than without the equal sign. They all have to be, okay, with the greater than, less than, um, or all have to be just greater than, or with the equal sign or without the equal sign, but consistent. You can't put half of them with and half of them without. So as long as you're consistent, you can use either. I personally feel that when it's a solid line, that part, that line is included, and it should have the equal sign with it. That's my own personal preference, but um, that's fine. But there is the answer to this, this question. Those are the inequalities that define the region R. Okay, so that's the end of question number three from this paper. Other questions from this October 2021 P1 paper can be found in the playlist that will appear somewhere in this region. Other questions from this topic of inequalities from P1 um, will be found in this playlist that should appear somewhere in this region. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link over here. Thank you for watching and see you soon.